Hello, my name is Mr. Darrow, and I am your child's second period media teacher, and welcome to my virtual back to school night. Let me just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have a family. I have a uh, daughter who just started high school, and I have a son who just started middle school. My wife teaches fifth grade over at Del Paso Manor. Distance learning has made it very tough for us, so that's why whenever we have a free free time we like to get out to the ocean or go for a hike i would like to be done with school you know by five o'clock each day this is my 20th year teaching middle school i taught 16 years at winston churchill middle school and this is my fourth year teaching at barrett what does media during distance learning look like well the students will learn how to film edit and produce a show once a week from home as the year moves along we will add another show We'll create PSAs, documentaries, instructional, and creative videos. And our main purpose of this show is to connect our community to the school. Media is not a time for students to check social media or use YouTube as a source of entertainment. Instead, we will use YouTube for tutorials and directions. Media is not for playing computer games or designed for social media or online dating services. And lastly, we're not here to talk about our pets unless they're making a PSA about it. Our school is funded by CTE, which is Career Technical Education, and we just received a $16,000 grant for equipment. We have a partnership with Del Campos Media Broadcast Class, and Barrett is the only middle school funded by CTE in our district. I promise I will always treat every student fair, even though I treat students different. This may sound confusing, but I have a lot of returning students that I have that connection with, and I could talk to them in a way I wouldn't talk to my new students that are maybe shy and not really comfortable with me just yet. I have my students' best interests, which means if a student is having a hard time, I'm always an advocate for them. Them first. I always put my students first, sometimes ahead of whatever it is that I'm doing here at home. Um, and I also teach uh, differentiated learning because I understand that we all learn at a different pace and I'll make sure to give uh, enough time for students to complete their work. So I'm really flexible with due dates and uh, helping students finish their projects. And all I ask is for students to show effort and pride in what they create. I'm also always online during my required uh, class time. So I will stay online if students need to have uh, questions. I'm making sure that I'm available for them there. Our weekly schedule will look like this. On Mondays and Thursdays, I will introduce new concepts on editing and filming techniques. Then on Wednesday, we will plan together our show for the following week as a whole group. Each week, students will be placed into groups that will create PSAs, documentaries, and how-to videos. They will be due the following week. My grading policy is fairly simple. A four is an A, three is a B, a two is a C, a one is a D, and a zero is an F. There will be no homework after class time. However, there may be times in the evenings or on weekends where students may have to work on something. As you know, the news is always changing and students must adapt. I also must add in this as well. Um, students need to be showing up to my Zoom classes and not just showing up. They, they need to show up and be an active participant. If they have a black screen, that's fine. But if they have a black screen and I call on them and they don't answer and I come back and another time they don't answer, I can't give them full credit for being in that Zoom class because they are not a full participant. Um, I don't make students show me their faces, but I say, if you don't show your face, please be ready for me to call on you. So if they have a black screen and I see someone's name, I'll just say their name like, hey guys, what do you think about this? Make sure you're reminding your students to show up to the Zoom meetings and be an active participant. My projects and assignments. The first topic that we discussed was essential equipment. So cell phones, flip grid, camcorders, and microphones. If a student doesn't have a cell phone or a camcorder or a microphone to use, I have provided this next opportunity. I could door dash equipment like cameras, tripods, microphones, headphones, SD cards, or whatever it is the student may need. The student does not have to own one of these. That is not recommended. In class, we'll discuss and practice shooting wide, medium, tight shots, sequencing, discussing the rule of thirds, talking about A roll and B roll, in addition to many other shooting fundamentals and editing tips. 
Speaking of editing, CTE has purchased every student at Barrett in the media class a Wii video account where students could film, edit, all at home, and send me the information. If a student already has their own editing platform, they are welcome to use that as well. I'm encouraging all types of platforms here. This year, my students will also be participating in the Student Educational Video Awards put on by the SCCC. Last year, Barrett participated in this event and our school had the most nominations out of any middle school at the SEBAs. This year, we plan on doing the same. So stay tuned. The entry deadline is February 21st and we're still not sure when the event will take place. Will it be live? Will it be virtual? Who knows? And lastly, I encourage students to tell their story. Their story is more interesting than me giving them an idea. I want students to take ownership in this class and develop and create statements that they choose what they want to do. Since we're at home, and if a problem comes along, give yourself five minutes to figure it out. The, the first immediate response that a student wants to do is email me. I'm having computer issues as well. We have to be uh, patient and flexible. All I ask for my students to do is try. That's all I need them to do. Just try, come on in, try to be a participant in a Zoom meeting. If you have any questions, you could always go ahead and email me. If you email me in the evening and it's late, I'm probably not gonna respond to you to the next morning. Our students are middle school students, and if they have a question, they could always email me as well. Thank you for uh, watching this video. If you have any questions, email me. I'm gonna try to make this as enjoyable as possible. And I promise you, uh, I got your students back and I am putting in uh, a lot of work. Have a great night. Talk to you soon.